Welcome to another session on technology. As you know, that we have decided at Zero Project to include ICT, which stands for Information and Communication Technology, in our call for nominations each year. Why is that? Because we think that innovations happening in the ICT sector might be and can be highly beneficial for persons with disabilities. And in order not to, use, to, to lose out on this opportunity, we have taken the decision to include them in our call for nominations. So for the first time, we had two topics, basically. We had employment and ICT last year. And uh, we were lacking some of the criteria, unfortunately, because as you know, the Zero Project Award selects three main criteria. Innovation, which means a novelty, not necessarily on a global scale, but definitely on a regional one. Impact, the tested product, which is beneficial for persons with disability and not a prototype and not a thing which is only an idea. And the third criteria is scalability. So we want to scale, we want to multiply, we want to really distribute this product or service. When we got the nominations from the ICT sector, some of them lacked the vital ingredient of impact because they were young, they were prototypes, but in order not to lose out on them, uh, we created the ICT track. This was a last minute wordplay, basically. Uh, we developed and we decided that we had to exclude them from the official selection process, but we will take the opportunity and let them pitch in front of a zero project IT advisory board. And this is what we did last fall. We had 29 different technologies who had a virtual five minute pitch session in front of the advisory board. And the advisory board gave the opinion they were rating again on the innovation, but also on the potential impact and also on their chances for success. So we want to repeat these uh, sessions from last fall, from September, October, a little bit in, in this environment. I'm very happy to have experts here in the studio with me. Uh, Samira Rauter, who is a social investor, and Christian Schinko uh, from Bank Austria. And I'm very happy to see you, Markus Freiberg, who is joining us from Germany remotely. Hi. Let us start with a brief introduction. Samira, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you, Wilfried. Thank you for the invitation. Hello, my name is Samira Rauter. I'm a member of the board of the People Share Foundation based in Austria and Vienna. Uh, the People Share Foundation is a charitable foundation hmm, dedicated to help um, children and young people in need. The focus is on education and refugee aid, not only in Austria, um, but truly globally. And I um, experience um, inequality on a daily basis in my current positions. And as we all know, um, social inequality has various faces. I'm also a co-founder of uh, the House of Philanthropy in Vienna, where uh, wonderful um, organizations and foundations like the Essel Foundation or Ashoka um, come together. They work on their field of expertise, but they join also their forces to uh, increase their impact. And a wonderful um, example of, um, of a co-creation is the Sinnbildungsstiftung, a charitable foundation um, founded by the Austrian government and 14 different foundations. Uh, we uh, identify and, and um, support outstanding innovations in the field of um, education in Austria. Thank you, Samira. I see Shadi has joined us as well. Shadi, good to see you. Thanks for coming. Uh, Shadi, please introduce yourself briefly. Shadi, I think you're still on mute. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, difficult for me to find the button sometimes <laughs> uh, with my limited mobility. Yeah, that's part of the issue of uh, technology when it's designed accessibly. Um, so, uh, yeah, my name is Shadi Abuzara. I'm also based in Vienna. I work for the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, uh, which is an international standards body that develops standards for the web. It was um, founded by Tim Berners-Lee, uh, who is the inventor of the World Wide Web. And I personally work for the Web Accessibility Initiative, 
part of WTC, which focuses on making the web, including apps and technologies that we all know, uh, um, available or accessible to people with disabilities. Thank you, Shadi. Marcos, please introduce yourself. Good to see you. Yeah, hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure uh, to be here uh, and to join uh, remotely from uh, Germany. My name is Markus Freiburg. Uh, I'm the co-founder and managing director of the financing agency for social entrepreneurship that we have set up together with Ashoka Germany, basically support um, Ashoka fellows and other social entrepreneurs in raising hybrid growth capital from European impact investors. And so far, we managed to support more than 60 financing rounds successfully and raising more than uh, 30 million euros with closed transaction in uh, Germany, Austria, Belgium, uh, Netherlands, uh, Poland, Hungary, and shortly also Sweden. So really trying to build a pan-European open pipeline. And last year, we also managed uh, to set up um, a co-investment facility, uh, the European Social Innovation Impact Fund, with a target volume of 20 million euros. And it's uh, the first uh, fund across Europe that is providing patient uh, mezzanine capital to social enterprises and benefiting from guarantees from the European Commission on this easy program. And yeah, really looking forward to the pitch session today. Thank you, Marcus. Last but not least, Christian, uh, please go ahead, introduce yourself, and I think you also present us a very briefly a product you've developed. Th thank you, Wilfried. My name is Christian Schinko. I am head of disability management at Unicredit Bank Austria. Unicredit Bank Austria is a pioneer in the field of inclusion and uh, accessibility in Europe. Uh, and I'm happy to be with this team. Uh, we are developing uh, solutions and inclusion uh, approaches for our employees, but um, above all for our clients. And we're, I'm happy to be here and to present you a quite new product we uh, have, and uh, I will start now, I guess. So um, at Unicredit Bank Austria, we see our commitment to inclusion and accessibility, not as a purely social act, but above all, as an investment in the future. Therefore, we do not focus on grants or donations, but on the financing of aids or modifications for accessibility, which subsequently enable people with disabilities to participate more easily in everyday life and above all in working life. For this reason, we, um, we finance such needs through loans. However, we offer people with disabilities conditions that are significantly below the market level, according to the motto, return of capital, but not return on capital. As you know, a loan consists of the land capital plus interest and fees. As every other loan, it is important to us uh, that every borrower returns the borrowed capital as planned, but we lend him or her the capital with very attractive conditions. With the new Inclusionskredit uh, for all people who present the Austrian Disability Pass uh, with disability degree of 50% or more, or an ID card from the Hilfsgemeinschaft of the Blinden and Seeschwachen, uh, we are offering people with disabilities a very attractive financing option at 1.5% uh, interest and no processing costs for purchases of these aids. So this is a further expansion of our services for people with disabilities, and it enables our customers with disabilities to um, live independently and more important, self-determined. Thank you, Wilfred. Thank you. So without much further ado, as Michael would say, uh, we watched the first pitch. Uh, it's a technology from Turkey and it's called Accessible Translation. I am Özel Çelik, I am from Turkey. Uh, I'm co-founder of Accessible Translation. Uh, as you see, this whole language is the visual language created by hearing impairment when communicating amongst themselves using the hand gesture and facial expression. In Europe, there's a 34 uh, uh, million, and in the world, there are 466 million deaf people living. Uh, they have some problems in daily life. Uh, the big problems is communication problems, uh, and in Turkey, uh, especially, the 15% uh, of the deaf people couldn't understand when they read 
paper or something like that. So uh, they have problems for uh, access to information and access to uh, watch, uh, access to video. Uh, so uh, the uh, who, the the people who wants to know, uh, learn uh, sign languages, uh, they learn sign languages and easily forget when they don't use. So we have uh, innovation uh, solution. We have one minute uh, video, quick video. We have a plugin. The plugin. Uh, we put that plugins on the uh, sorry. We can put a plugin on the web page, and then you click on the bottom the avatar or the person appears on the web page, and after that uh, you can when you click uh, the web page uh, you can easily uh, translate it to sound language as an avatar you can move uh, it whenever you want on the web page you can slow down or you can get it faster uh, these tools helps uh, deaf people to uh, understand the web uh, text easily And another our solution is the sound language video translations. We put a plugin to video, video like YouTube or some things like uh, video players. So according to subtitles, it uh, translates the uh, video uh, to sound languages. You can move whenever you want. You can bigger the uh, avatar or uh, sign person, translator persons. No, we are developing two-way translation system that the deaf people uh, sign on the webcam uh, and other or phone. Uh, and deep, uh, deep learning models works at the behind and it translates to text and uh, and voice. When we sign, we say uh, when we say something to the deaf people uh, and the avatars uh, translate it to uh, sound languages. Uh, you know there are lots of he hearing impairments people, so we have uh, tried to uh, make it easier to access uh, web uh, and video and information. We have young team, uh, and uh, we are in Turkey, and we, in, uh, in, we, are, we know developed for Turkish sign languages and uh, American sign languages. Now we are developing, uh, and Turkey uh, especially. Uh, there is a regulation for banking, and we have we, uh, two banks, uh, Turkish, uh, two banks uh, using this our uh, innovation. Uh, currently, uh, especially the green screens, uh, offline video recordings used for the uh, video translation system. We have we apply three patents in Turkey and one PCT to Europe, uh, and we we join. Uh, BBVA momentum in uh, Spain, and we get uh, Horizon 2020 uh, Phase One uh, and Information Technology Awards for Disabled Peoples. This is the our uh, source uh, page. Thank you very much. So this was the recorded pitch from Accessible Translation, and I'd like to do. Uh, a small round of comments with each of you. Uh, let us start with you, Shadi. You've been on the advisory board. Thank you very much for that. So you have seen it before. Uh, what do you like about it, and how do you rate uh, the chances for success in the market? I think, more generally, the field of natural language processing has incredible potentials for uh, accessibility. Um, opens many possibilities here there are uh, we people with disabilities have been using uh, technologies for uh, for for many years um, for translating for example between languages for providing support like auto summarize uh, functionality or to sign language um, there's even now attempts to translate sign language into text so video recognition um, and, and, and things like this. So we see a lot of development in here, but until uh, recently, these were always very specialized solutions that were very expensive, but we're seeing more deployment of um, voice interaction 
voice agents and many other things. Now you speak to your car or you speak to your fridge even, um, <laughs> uh, for better or worse. And this makes this technology more available and reduces the cost of assistive technologies and solutions for people with disabilities. So um, I see there's a big potential in this area. And um, I, I know it's a bit technical, but it is something um, that we see more, um, you know, happen more often. And I think there's really much potential here to be looked at in the coming years. Thank you, Shadi. Samira, please. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Um, in my perspective, um, I have two questions <laughs> that come to my mind. One would be, um, is it, um, how is the, the uh, competition uh, in this field? I'm, I'm not familiar with it. Are they the first ones to use such a um, particular technology? And uh, the second uh, question, uh, I mean, I would be interested to know is, um, I, is it just working with international sign language? Because as far as I know, every country or different countries have different sign languages. Uh, does it work well in different languages? In case it does, I think it has great potential. And it's, like you said, Shadi, it's uh, cost efficient, I think. And uh, so I see potential to scale it, of course. Thank you, Samira. By the way, we have the chat open, and uh, we have to ask the contributors to be in the, in the, in the chat so maybe they can relate uh, to the first question. The second one I can answer. This is in Turkish Sign Language Institute Technology from, from, from Turkey. Uh, Marcus, your comments, please. No, I think it's a very interesting, um, let's say, uh, uh, solution for a very relevant uh, uh, social challenge. And I think actually remember that uh, last year during the, uh, the project conference in Vienna, where we still could meet physical, that I think also uh, Sign Time, a Dutch, so, uh, sorry, an Austrian social enterprise was presenting and has developed a, a similar solution for Austrian sign language. So I think it has a great impact potential and scalability. I think the challenge is that on the one hand side that the different sign languages are very specific and, and that needs to be, uh, let's say, considered when scaling. And I would also be uh, keen to understand more about, uh, let's say, the business model and, and the proof of concept and because we know from, from other um, applications in, in the market and especially the business model is a challenging part uh, to convince also uh, impact investors as well as a, as a successful proof of concept for the attract further investors to, to support the further scale-up. Thank you, Marcus. Christian, please. I do very much agree with, the, uh, with my speaker colleagues uh, here. It's, it's a tool with a huge potential. Uh, Avatar is, uh, from my point of view, the next big thing. The question is whether it's, uh, it's accepted by the, by the target group uh, concerning face, facial expressions, for example, and so on. But uh, it's a, a tool, it's, it's easy to deal with. That's an accessible accessibility tool, highly accessible and low cost. And I see very much potential in this. Thank you so much. So the next video is called Inclusion 24. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. My name is Clark Valerie. Uh, I'm from Inclusion24, and I brought some support with me. That's Karin Wagner. She is stationed in Upper Austria, so she's also joining us over Zoom. Um, I want to show you our newest uh, project. It's called kind of Information Channels for All, because our goal, everybody go, everybody's goal is to provide information for everybody, because uh, information communication is the essential thing but communication means something different to everybody of us. So it's actually a big challenge now in, with digital media or social media that everybody gets the information um, they're supposed to get. Uh, and if you maybe have a hard time reading or writing, or if you have some other disability, or if you uh, need a longer time to, in order to understand um, textures, for, for example, then you, you have a big disadvantage. So it's actually our everybody's goal um, to provide information for everybody. Like, as we can see now with the coronavirus, it's really important that really everybody gets the information, but they have to get the information uh, in a way they can also work with it and understand. So 
what did we do? Um, we talked to um, many people that are experts of their own life, like blind people, deaf people, uh, people with uh, physical problems or uh, mental illness and ask them how they um, try to get to, to information every day. So um, then what, uh, what did we do? We took our own image clip that we produced about Inclusion24 and tried to put it in all the kind of information that was suited for this own group. So what did we do for the last couple of months? We um, produced subtitles for our German language uh, image clip. We produced English subtitles. We produced a video in Austrian sign language, uh, one with international sign language, one with easy sign language. That's kind of like um, uh, easy to read version in with um, international sign. Then we produced an easy to read uh, or easy, easy to listen to actually uh, video um, for levels A1, A2 and B1 in German. We produced a monochrome version and the audio descriptive German version. And so that you understand what I'm talking about, I just want to show you some pictures out of our image clips. So here you can see we have uh, the possibility to put sign language uh, in the different um, pictures. We have an audio description for uh, blind people. And this is the monochrome version. Maybe this is one I should use uh, also a sentence about. Why did we do that? Um, we have, we got the information that a lot of people get very overwhelmed with a lot of information because films nowadays are built up that in 30 seconds you get all the information you need. Um, and it's too fast and it's too much and people can't um, um, cope with it. And the second thing is that there's actually very many people who are colorblind, like green and red colorblind, and they also have a hard time uh, watching videos or watching films if there are too many colors in the films. So that's why we produced the monochrome version. Um, the easy to listen to versions um, are supported with uh, metacom symbols. So um, and and the texture is, is very um, easy and very slow, so you can really follow easily. Um, yeah, so I hope I could have I could give you some idea, and if um, Zero Project would like to also have some different perspective on their web pages, we would love to help you. And I'm open for any questions now. So this was the pitch of Inclusion Twenty Four. Uh, and since we have Valerie here in the studio, she's one of the uh, sign language team. I would like to mention the team and really uh, thank them. Patricia Brück, Valerie Clark, Monica mück eck and Georg Marsch. Thank you so much. You are wonderful. Christian, we go in reverse order. How do you judge this and how do you see the chances for success, please? It's a very holistic offer, I guess. Um, I, I like it uh, much why, because uh, in the wake of, of, of the European um, Acts uh, in disability of disability and uh, of accessibility. Sorry, uh, directives. Uh, it's a must to have the various impairments uh, solutions for that. So, uh, I guess it's it's a very very good uh, package uh, for for videos or for media. Thank you, uh, Marcus. Please. Yeah, I think Inclusion24 is addressing a, a very important uh, challenge uh, to really have an inclusive uh, communication for everybody to, uh, let's say, really have information channels uh, that uh, can, let's say, be customized to the need of the specific uh, groups. I think that is very important. And I have to say that from the pitch, I have not yet fully understood whether there's also a business model behind it. They could uh, scale it up. And I think if you want to attract um, impact investors, it, it would also be important uh, to understand and go a bit more into details into the uh, USP, um, because we know that there are also a few other, let's say, um, providers in the market like uh, like uh, the Austrian company Capito, and would be good to understand uh, what the positioning is vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, these other competitors. But I think it's a great uh, solution, and it's uh, addressing a very relevant uh, challenge. So all the best for the team. Thank you, Marcus. Samira, please. Um, I agree. <clears throat> Making information accessible to 
different people with different kinds of disabilities is essential and important. And as I see, the approach is um, like covering several uh, solutions that are already existing yeah? and collecting them in one uh, technology. Uh, for me, um, uh, the question here is, is it innovative enough? Just, I mean, there are those solutions, they're just collecting it and offering it in one uh, package. Um, I, what I wonder is, um, would it be even more innovative if they, um, the, the founders uh, would um, make it possible for the users to even um, inter interact with each other and um, exchange their experience while using this tool? This would be really innovative for me. And the second question is, as, I, as, I, I, as far as I know, there is already an Austrian um, company, Atempo, um, and their product, Capito. Uh, it's a wonderful um, tool. And uh, I would like, I mean, I'm interested in benchmarking it with, uh, with uh, Capito. Very good, interesting thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the chat is open. Please ask your questions. Uh, Shadi, you're next, please. Yeah, I concur with all, all my uh, previous speakers, don't, don't. Uh, but I um, but I think that um, the, the market here is actually a growing market um, and it's good to have different providers actually. Um, it, um, it, it nourishes the market and the availability. I think there's also, uh, uh, we see that in countries where there has been uh, stronger history of accessibility and, 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 and disability policies that actually um, market have grown and that there are different providers that offer different kind of things, maybe not tool-based, but more really uh, human service uh, oriented. And generally, the area of people with cognitive and learning disabilities is one that is so individual, that is very difficult uh, with our current research and, and technology uh, that we have available to, to automate things or to um, provide kind of uh, off-the-shelf solutions. So it really needs customization and expertise here. Um, so I think this is a, a very important uh, area where hopefully we can see even more development and, and, and more um, uh, different kinds of service provided in this area in the future. Thank you, Shadi. So let's take a look at the next technology. It's called Six Degrees, and it is from Israel. Go ahead, please. So hi, everyone. Uh, I'd like to introduce, so my name is Miri Berger. I'm the CEO of Six Degrees. What we do is we um, found a way to use uh, motion, track motion, analyze motion, uh, in order to enable people that have lost mobility, in the case of this presentation, upper limb mobility, uh, to regain communication with, uh, di with the digital world, that means uh, be able to control computers, phones, tablets, play games, and watch movies. So um, basically, the, the problem that we are presented with are, is 4.3% uh, of the population in the world. Uh, that, would, that would sum up to 300 million people are currently today unable to use their, hand, the, uh, their uh, fine motor skills um, to, and, and thus are uh, barred from using uh, smart devices. Uh, this is due to injury, paralysis, or disease, things like Parkinson, tremor, uh, paralysis due to stroke, amputation, upper limb uh, reduction, and, and many other factors. Um, we've identified this problem uh, from a personal story that I'll get into later, um, but just to give you an idea close to home, um, the number in, in, uh, in specific countries that we've identified in the UK stands at around 8 million people. Uh, out of the, those 8 million people specifically targeting upper limb, um, uh, loss of upper limb function, uh, the, the amount of people uh, that have a job and can hold their job is, is uh, half a percent, uh, which is a staggering number. A lot of these people have an education, have the ability, cognitive ability to do work to provide from the, for themselves and for their family. And the only thing barring them from, from doing that uh, is the fact that they've lost their fine motor skills. Uh, and so to solve this, we've, Six Degrees has created a wearable device 
This device, uh, through a five minute game, the first time you take it out of the box, uh, analyzes your ability of motion. It's illustrated on, on, uh, uh, on this, on Leah's hand here in, in the in photo. Um, so she put, she puts it on, you can put it on your, uh, your uh, wrist area, upper uh, arm, uh, even amputated leg uh, or prosthetic. It doesn't require, it, it doesn't require touch or skin in order to analyze your motion. Uh, so you put it on, you play five to seven minute game. In that five to seven minutes, our device or our smart algorithm embedded inside learns about the way that you move. If you have limited range, it characterizes that. If you have limited motion, um, it, you know, that differs because of uh, cerebral palsy or amputation, it knows how to tell those apart. Uh, if you have tremor, it'll characterize the tremor. If you have um, uh, only gross motor, and in, in the case of people with upper limb uh, with amputation that are using the upper side of their uh, arm, it'll uh, characterize the gross motion, uh, and then it tailors to you. Uh, following this, you can connect to anything smart with Bluetooth without installing a program, uh, and it'll translate your motion to control over that device. So if I'm connected to a computer, it translates my motion to what the computer sees as a cursor moving on the screen, or me using a touchpad, um, trackpad, sorry. If I connect to a, a touch device, like a phone or a tablet, it'll translate my motion to control over that device. and it. Uh, thus allowing you to go back to work, communication, and even play. Uh, people forget that their downtime is an important time, uh, and the fact that you can consume, consume content, operate online movies, and play games uh, is, a, is, a, is a big value add to quality of life, and so we're not neglecting that. So it's a, it's a, uh, our unfair advantage uh, is based on the technology, the fact that we have two learning algorithms embedded in the device, so I talked a little bit about the fact that it creates a baseline for you uh, of, of your motion in five minutes. Uh, but what it do does with that baseline is it translates your ability to full control on the other side. This means that if I have limited motion, my limited motion for the device is the full motion of the world. And so I can use the full screen on, on the corresponding um, device that I'm, I'm controlling. If Mary, have you, have, tremor, you have one minute left, Mary. Great. If I have tremor, uh, thank you. It, it'll uh, translate that tremor into smooth motion on the screen and so on. There are many devices in the market, but we're not uh, bound by cameras, location, uh, or touching your skin. Uh, and so we create a, um, a, a really uh, great uh, opportunity for these specific users. We've had over 500, 500 people try our device. We're currently engaged in a partnership with the municipality of Tel Aviv um, to get regain employment and with Shiva Hospital, one of the 10 leading rehabilitation hospitals in the world, to see uh, the application of gaming uh, as a form of physical therapy. Uh, we've had people reach out to us uh, and are following, following up with those partnerships. Uh, to date, we have secured uh, three patent families, uh, two patents approved, 10, 10 patents pending, raised, uh, the majority of our funding is grant funding, 600,000 of this are grants and prizes. Uh, and we, uh, are, I should actually change that, we're currently reading three uh, beta programs because we just got into another program with a leading uh, health provider in Israel. Uh, we can see the potential of this, integrating this in the market. We know our user, we know how to get to them through distributors, through associations that cater to them currently. Some of them are listed up there. Um, we're a team of dedicated entrepreneurs, uh, disabled veteran, uh, and myself, and uh, young and enthusiastic uh, developers to get this to market with an amazing advisory team. And we offer a double bottom line, a, dou a double advantage, um, both economic and social value. And we would love for you to come reach out, partner, and help us change your life. And I thank you for listening, and I'm happy to be <laughs> Thank you so much. So this was six degrees, and you could tell it was the fastest pitch ever. Uh, I think Miri was really speeding up towards the end because I tried to enforce the five-minute rule also upon her, but I did not succeed, obviously. Um, six degrees, Samira, what's your opinion about it? Um, first of all, I was kind of shocked to learn that 300 million people are unable to use their smart devices due to injuries and other reasons. Um, I think. It's a great approach. Um, I would just be interested to know how um, about the costs, how costly it is, the device. But it is, um, from my perspective as a funder, I would say, um, apart from the costs, um, it, uh, it is very, a very tangible uh, 
uh, device. It's easy to understand. I think also the business model is, is very easy to understand. I, I understand why other funders and, and the government even could be interested in, in cooperating. And um, I think it's uh, what I found very impressive is what Miri also, also told um, in, her, in her pitch. It uh, translates the limitation of people into a whole world of new possibilities. And I think this is a very, very uh, great point because it, it uh, starts in a very early process of this, um, um, uh, of, of, of this uh, the, the digitalization and, and using the, the devices that would be needed. And um, making it accessible to, to so many people, it's a huge target group. And I think it, it, it uh, ticks many boxes when it comes to scaling and importance for the market. Thank you, Samira. Shadi, please, what do you think? Yeah, I'm very biased here uh, because I am one of these uh, 300,000 <laughs> or the, have uh, limited mobility due to quadriplegia. So I, I, I can relate this. It comes very close to home. Uh, yeah, I, I think this is really, really incredibly important. Um, and it's good. It's showing also the hardware aspect, the hardware design. Uh, we focus often in digital accessibility only on the uh, software design or the user interface. But we need to also now more and more with the Internet of Things and things becoming more distributed and ubiquitous in, in our environments, in the smart environments, that we need to really look at the hardware and how the interaction with the hardware as well. I remember my, myself being able to play uh, with the Xbox uh, <laughs> uh, due to the controller here and being able to play tennis. Um, so this is all good, and, and um, I really applaud the effort. The, the one question for me is, of course, the competitor are here, uh, things like smartwatches from big brands that are already available, um, and whether uh, one of the big issues with Internet of Things is sometimes the connectivity. If you have something from one brand that doesn't work with another brand and so on, you still have a bit of these closed things. Uh, again, I'm getting too technical, but I think this is going to be quite an issue, the interoperability, and hopefully we can have these solutions more integrated, more mainstream. Um, so I remember a few years ago Apple announcing, and actually they've done a bit of work where they also include this ability in recognizing, for example, the movement in the Apple Watch, not only when you're walking, not only counts the steps, but actually counts your wheelchair movements. Um, and can count the, the meters that you do with a wheelchair as well. So maybe we see these things more integrated um, into mainstream products as well. Thank you, Shadi. Marcus, what do you think? I think it's, it's um, six degrees is addressing a very relevant challenge and because I think especially with the, the increasing importance of smart devices and the importance of the, of the internet, it's obviously um, crucial to provide an, a barrier-free access also to handicapped people, and therefore I think it, it's an absolutely relevant uh, topic. Um, I would agree with Shardin that the uh, USP uh, compared to competitor solutions would be a key point to understand better and also to make it, uh, let's say, an, an, an investable for, from an impact investor perspective. But uh, yeah, I like the energy and the drives that the team is having, and uh, yeah, I think it's, that is very positive. And I also uh, want to point to, let's say, the hybrid financing that they have been using so far, which I think is also very typical uh, for these early stage uh, social enterprise solutions, so that they usually uh, kick off with some grant funding and then over time also uh, added with some complementary uh, impact investing funding and then after the successful uh, proof of uh, concept and proof of market, they get further invest investment funding into to, uh, to finance a further scale up of this uh, important impact solution. Thank you, Marcus, for this very interesting perspective. Christian, what do you think? I guess the, the, the pitch is very good and, and very far in the analysis and in the studies they, uh, they implemented in, in this pitch. For me, the question is, as already mentioned, uh, whether they compete or have to compete in the future with devices with embedded gesture control of capabilities. Uh, which learn to, um, to do the same features as the, um, the device they developed. So in the future, it, it will be a race between them. 
but they are ahead at the moment uh, with the personalization, with the uh, adaption within minutes. Uh, that's a huge advantage uh, for the moment. But in the future, uh, the gesture controls features for the smartphones or other devices will be will be hard. The competition. Thank you, Christian. So we have one more. Uh, it's again from Turkey, and it's called Auto Train Brain. Please. My name is Matt Erolo. I'm the CEO of Auto Train Brain. And Auto Train Brain is a brain performance improvement is, uh, for uh, dyslexia and autism. And it is a personalized AI driven platform. And I'm based in Istanbul and speaking from Istanbul, I should say. So we have people with special learning disabilities and uh, autism. Uh, and comorbidities to live a better and drug-free life. The problem is that although IQ is a normal or above normal, some people have uh, some problems with reading, writing, math, and organizational skills. And dyslexia is a subtype of learning disability. Uh, the problems are mostly in reading and it is mostly comorbid with ADHD and it's a lifelong autoimmune related conditions and the children suffers from dyslexia. They lack of motivation. They don't have any motivation to go to school and they have more health problems. And when they become adults, uh, they have more health expenditures and they have difficulties in the employment market. So these are the problems, and this is not a problem, a small problem. You can find more than 750 million people in the world. Uh, at least 10% of any given population have learning disability, and mostly the economic burden is on the shoulders of the families. And if we look at the market size, it's a learning disability treatment market is around $30 billion and neurotech market is around $20 billion. And if we look at the existing solutions, these are limited to drugs, neurofeedback and special education, but all of them are costly, requires expertise, not comfortable, not scalable, and even may have side effects. And uh, for special education, it takes 3.5 years for a child, for a dyslexic child to keep up uh, with their peers. It is a very long uh, period, uh, I can say. So in our team, we are engineers and neurologists, doctors, MDs, and in the software team, we have some software development uh, partners as well. So our main aim was to create a mobile assistive technology or a technology neurotech based solution for dyslexia for uh, children between four and 14 um, of ages and who wants to find a reliable and comfortable treatment of dyslexia with measurable outcomes. And we wanted to minimize the cost time allocation and the hurdles and increase the life quality of the children uh, with our solution. Auto Train Brain is a mobile application with a headset. A headset consists of 14 sensors and mobile application can be run on iOS and Android. And we are a solution with a social impact. Um, be, because uh, in three or six month therapy, you can uh, increase uh, the improvements, uh, the performance improvements for dyslexia. Even they can uh, read better and they can um, understand better. And we create equality for all in reaching out to solutions of neurofeedback and multisensor learning because these are quite expensive. And we transform society by making brain performance improvement possible as a self-service at home and it is trusted by neurologists. It provides continuous improvement. We have uh, completed our clinical trials at Ankara University, the Faculty of Medicine in 2019. So this is how the program runs. So a child wears a headset and we just process the EEG signals and then neurofeedback is provided in uh, real time online. So these are proven outcome, entropy in the brain is increased, 
and Tur uh, Turkish market assumptions, testimonials from our clinical trial. And we are at the media. And what is our competitive unique advantage? Uh, the left hemispheric dominance is improved. Disconnection syndrome, mini colonopathy are reduced. Reading comprehension is improved. And we have an AI-based personalized trainings. Currently, um, we have solution for everyone, especially for dyslexia and autism. So we are now doing a clinical trial for autism in Istanbul. After clinical trial, we have plans to expand globally. So this was the last pitch for today, Auto Train Brain uh, from Turkey, and we will do another round of expert opinions and evaluations. Markus, this time you go first, please. What do you think? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the great pitch from, uh, from Auto Train Brain. I think it's a very interesting uh, and promising solution. Uh, I think addressing a, a very, let's say, relevant uh, social challenge, and especially the solution for dyslexia for children, let's say, age 4 to 14, I think is very, very promising. Um, I think it will be very key for the further development uh, to get the results of the, of the clinical studies to really also see what the, uh, what the impact results uh, can be and how it's actually improving the, uh, the situation of the kids. Uh, because I think that is an also key to um, uh, underpin the USP uh, compared to other competitors. And for example, we know, uh, let's say, other companies in, in Turkey, actually, for example, from Ashoka, a fellow uh, from Otsimo, I think that is uh, providing a similar solution. I think that will be key to have a clear position and that is best uh, be done with clear impact data. And then I think it can be a very promising way uh, to scale uh, out to train brain then further also to other countries. Thank you. Uh, Shadi, you're next, please. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I agree with Marcus, um, and I, I, as I said earlier, I think the area of people with cognitive and learning disabilities, which is a very, very broad spectrum, um, and specifically in this case, uh, the aspect of dyslexia is, is really important. It's a very common issue. It's something that, um, that we can make progress on. It's one of the areas that is maybe a bit more understood and where um, there are um, assistance uh, possibilities uh, that, that, that can be provided in this area. Um, I think this is a, a new approach. One of the things that comes to my mind is here the need for co-design. Um, it wasn't too clear to me in the pitch really how this is um, integrated as a product that is well accepted by the, 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 the target group. Um, and, and this is something that is really important. Um, we, we've seen things in the past where, um, you know, serious games or, or things like this that weren't properly co-designed were, were not really well accepted, uh, but instead, um, you know, more mainstream things uh, like like Xbox or whatever and, 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 and reusing or, you know, whatever, um, and, and, and reusing that for uh, other purposes. So basically the packaging and how the interface of this and how it will be accepted, I think, is a very important point. Thank you, Shadi. Samira, you're next, please. I like the idea very much of uh, neurologists and engineers coming together to co-create and find a solution in a, like you said, Shadi, very important um, field. Uh, for me, um, it is very hard to judge because it's very technical. It's not my expertise, <laughs> but um, on a very personal note, I can say as a mother of a two-year-old boy, um, you're uh, trying constantly to reduce your child's uh, screen time. And it seems to be a technical device which encourages children to use their phone. And um, this is something that I'm a little bit critical <laughs> about, to be honest but they seem to have a lot of data and, and uh, also trials, cl clinical trials, they seem to be successful, which is fundamental if they are seeking uh, government um, uh, funding, for instance. Yeah. And I think it sounds very promising. Thank you, Samira. Christian, please. For me, it's quite a, a miracle, yeah? a substitution of, of drugs or medication 
that's a key point. Uh, for a target group, which is pretty much vulnerable in, in growing up and, and help, helping this uh, target group to uh, better learn, better uh, understand and, and better think uh, is a very, very good uh, idea and an innovative product. Um, I guess, uh, as you mentioned already before, it's, it's a matter of design, it's a matter of, of cost, whether the government uh, um, gives the funds and, and, and uh, guarantees that's accessible from the cost side, and that would be the crucial thing from my point of view. Thank you so much, Christian. Well, I'm afraid uh, this concludes the session. Uh, this was a pitch on cutting-edge uh, technologies. Uh, we think that information and communication technology is here to stay, and we as Zero Project are keen to get your ideas, to get your prototypes, uh, your new ideas on a platform. Uh, please, we will have the new nomination out in, uh, in late spring. We will charge and ask for solution on accessibility and on ICT. So please send us uh, your products, your services, uh, and your ideas. I want to thank my panel. Samira, thank you for coming, Christian, for joining us at the, at the studio. Marcus, for being remotely. Shadi, good to see you. Uh, and hope we will meet in person any time soon in better times.